my name is Jonathan Hare, and this project is joint work with my collaborators from Penn State Statistics. Our goal in this project is to perform community detection on the stochastic block model and degree corrected stochastic block model under local differential privacy. The method we use to achieve this privacy guarantee is to construct a synthetic network via distributed self-reporting scheme that uses randomized response. Our main result is to prove the consistency of a modified spectral clustering estimator on the private synthetic network. And we point out that, to our knowledge, this is the first theoretical guarantee on differentially private community detection. So let's start by defining community detection. Here we see the same exact network visualized two different ways. In the image on the right, it's clear that we have three communities in this network. On the left, however, we don't observe the community labels and the community structure is less clear. Our goal in community detection is to recover these unobserved community labels based on the observed relationships in the network. The issue here is that the network might contain sensitive relationships. For example, this could be a network where edges represent intimate relationships between people or communications between people over a private medium. So to perform private community detection, what we really want to do is recover unobserved labels without having to even observe the true network. One method we might use to achieve this goal is to use a synthetic network. A simple way to obtain a synthetic network for a binary network is to use randomized response. So let's let Y be an n by n undirected adjacency matrix. And we'll assume that this network has no self loops. Now pick some value P in the interval 0 to 1 half. For each IJ pair, we can ask node I to report a private value for YIJ. Then we use these YIJ star values to reconstruct a synthetic adjacency matrix MPY. For convenience, we'll also denote the original network as M0 of Y. So what can we say about our synthetic network? In theory, we can say several nice things. For example, we know that the synthetic network is a mixture of the original network with an erdos reni network. We can also say the synthetic network resembles the true network in some sense, yet we're able to create the synthetic network without anyone actually knowing the true network in full. We can also say that the synthetic network satisfies epsilon edge differential privacy, where epsilon is the log odds of having flipped an entry in the adjacency matrix. In practice, however, we often notice that the synthetic network is much more dense than the true network. As a result, a considerable share of the edges in the synthetic network are fake. So for this reason, and other reasons, we might reasonably ask, can we use the synthetic network to perform meaningful community detection? In order to address that question theoretically, we're going to use a concrete setting of these block models. The first one I'd like to talk about is the stochastic block model. So in the stochastic block model, we have n nodes and k communities, and we have two parameters. The first is theta, which is a vector that assigns each node to one of the k communities. The second parameter is this k by k matrix of probabilities, b. Each edge in the stochastic block model occurs as an independent Bernoulli random variable, where the probabilities are taken from that matrix b based on the blocks to which the nodes belong. We'll also look at one popular extension to SBM called the degree corrected block model. In the degree corrected block model, we have one additional parameter, psi, which is a vector of length n that takes values from 0 to 1. This parameter effectively allows us to scale nodes to allow for more degree heterogeneity, so that nodes with a larger value of psi will have a higher expected degree than those with lower values of psi. So, why do we care about these models? SVM is the simplest parametric model with ground truth communities. It can be thought of as a generalization of the simple erdos reni graph. DCBM, in turn, is a generalization of SVM that allows for networks that more closely resemble real-world networks. To actually perform community detection, we're going to look closely at the method of spectral clustering. Let's say that Y is an n by n adjacency matrix. Then, if we let u hat be the n by k matrix consisting of the leading k eigenvectors of y, and we look at the rows of u hat, this gives us a mapping for each node to a vector u hat i in a low dimensional Euclidean space, rk. For the models that we're looking at, the vectors u hat i concentrate around convenient structures. For SBM, they should concentrate around k distinct points. And for general DCBM, 
they should concentrate around these rays that emanate from the origin. Unfortunately, while these convenient properties apply to the true SBM and DCBM networks, they do not in general apply to the synthetic networks that we get by randomly flipping edges. So here's an idea. Let's let dp be this function that takes an adjacency matrix and subtracts p from every element off the diagonal. Then for any random undirected binary network y, and the expectation of the adjacency matrix of y and the adjacency matrix of dp applied to the synthetic network have the same eigenvectors. This idea leads to an important lemma. Take y to be a DCBM satisfying appropriate properties. Let p be some value less than half, but possibly zero, so that mpy is the synthetic network if p is greater than zero, but it's the true network if p is equal to zero. Take u hat p from the leading k eigenvectors of dp applied to mpy, and take u from the leading eigenvectors of e tilde y as described earlier. Then, with reasonably high probability, we can say that u hat p concentrates around u. The strength of this concentration depends on p, as highlighted in green. In other words, regardless of privacy, the rows of u hat p will concentrate around the same structure as they do without privacy. But for larger values of p, which is to say, for more privacy, this concentration weakens. So then, how does this affect our spectral clustering results? So if we take y to be that same DCBM network from before, and we introduce just a little bit more notation, so let nj be the number of nodes in the jth community, and n min be the smallest of the nj's, remember that the parameter theta provides ground truth communities, and let's let theta hat be some estimate of community membership. Then we'll take the greatest proportion of misclassified nodes in theta hat for any single community, and we'll call that L tilde. So our simplified results look something like this. If we look specifically at the special case of the stochastic block model, where psi is equal to 1, and we cluster the rows of u hat p by k means to obtain theta hat p, then we obtain a convergence rate for L tilde that looks like the following. You'll note that the quantity in green is what's added by privacy. If we perform spectral clustering on the true network, then p is equal to zero and this term disappears. The results for the more general DCBM are similar. Here we normalize the rows of u hat p to have unit norm, and we cluster them via k medians to obtain theta hat p. Then we obtain a convergence rate that looks something like this. Within that last square root, we once again have this additive term of p over 1 minus 2p squared. In both cases, we note that if this p over 1 minus 2p squared term is of the same order as the largest value in b, the convergence rate is unaffected. On the other hand, if the largest entry in b goes to zero, while p remains fixed, we see a slower convergence rate. We'll summarize these results in terms of these two special cases. The first case is the case when the largest entry in b is bounded away from zero. So for a sequence of dense networks, if we have a fixed privacy parameter p, then the results that we get by using these private methods actually give us the same convergence rate as what we would see using the true network in the original non-private theory. The second case is the case of sparse networks. In sparse networks, all the entries in b shrink toward zero as n goes to infinity. While we are able to obtain consistent estimates of community membership using these private methods on sparse networks, we do see this coming at a cost. In particular, we see that the rate of convergence is slower when using the private methods instead of the original non-private methods. This slowing of convergence also limits the extent of sparsity that we can handle under privacy. For more details, please feel free to check out our full report on Archive. Thank you.